right. Moving on from the Warriors down to the... We're into the uh, hybrid cards now. Mm -hmm. I have to find that first one. I want to buy it. Talk a big game. Talk a big game, yes. Yeah. So this is, yeah, as we just said, talk a big game. Pitches, uh, it is a blue stripe, zero cost, um, brute guardian uh, action. It reads, mm -hmm. choose a number. The next time you deal that much or more damage to a hero this turn, create that many might tokens. Um, and it blocks for three. Great card. I think it's really good. Um, Issues yeah. with the card. Cost zero. Great things about the card. Cost zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just like, this is a really, I really like this because it's, um, I think it's a nuts Reinar card. Mm. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, It gives you something to do with multiple blues. And if you can line up like some sick intimidate stacks, it's like, I know what's going to hit. Because like, yeah. listen, you ain't blocking with shit. Um, it's really interesting in like Bravo as well, where it's like, all right, I know your armor. I know if you're running DRX hypothetically, or if you're out of them. Mm -hmm. And then like your all blue hand can at least turn into like, I'm going to turn this into like a zero for three, zero for four, zero for five. I had it the other night turned into a zero for six with Reinar. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. I went, I went red barraging. Talk a big game. Call six. Cause I'm like, all right, so I know you're not running D reacts and you have four block on equipment and here's an alpha rampage for nine. <laughs> oh, no, wait, it's 13. Cause you yeah. only have one card left in your hand. Uh, and you have one card to block with. So you're going to block three and then if you block with your four equipment that's seven so i get six might tokens and my follow-up turn was club for <laughs> club for ten yeah Jeez. Um, i think what i really like about this card and i think you just gave a good example to that fact is that it's kind of a it's not a uh how do i put this it's kind of a smart man's it's like you, you have to like really kind of suss out what you're doing and how to play it. Right. You can't just slam this down. It's not just a, you know, plus three damage. You know, you have to kind of think through things like you just said, you know, does they have defense reactions? What's the armor? So I like the interaction that this provides. And it also, you know, your opponent knows what you're doing, right. And knows what you, and obviously you call the number so they can, they have some agency in this decision too. It's not just create three might tokens. Now I hit you with something. Um, so cool card. I think it's a, okay. I see you card. Yeah, I agree. Cause it's not, it's not going to fit in everything. Um, but definitely is like, I really like this card too into like aggro decks where it's like, okay, like I know you don't want to block, but yeah, it's true. If you don't block this, I'm going to call, I'm going to call minus whatever your armor is. I'm calling that. <laughs> yeah. Give me a card. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's so true. it's, it's kind of like a, a winter's bite in that regard. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this card. I think it's really interesting. Yeah. Winter's uh, bite with agency, right? Yeah. They can choose yeah. to either give you the, my tokens or yep. uh, not which is okay with me. Yep. Um, okay, next one up is Runner Runner. And I have to find it. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get right into it. Next card right. up, Brute Warrior hybrid card. Uh, it pitches, it's a red, it costs two. It's called Runner Runner. And it says, uh, attacks for six, blocks for three. Pretty good. Uh, it says yep. when this attacks, if it has go again, create an agility token. This card is pretty good. <clears throat> I'm gonna. I, I think. I think it's I'm gonna say some things that are gonna shock some people. <laughs> so, I want to hear what Ted has to say first. I think um, if you've been watching the live streams this weekend a little bit, like I have, I haven't been glued to them. But the one thing that I notice is that these heroes are definitely designed in a way where you want agility tokens. And when you can string them together, I think that will, um, I think that very easily goes from limited to CC. And I think you want to play this card. This card is really good. <laughs> yeah. 
this card is an absolute, utter, complete banger. Yeah. And it's not close. Yeah. I like what that it, it say? blocks for three, man. That's pretty sick. It blocks for three. And what does it say in the other corner, Ted? Tax for six. It's a popper, baby. <laughs> and it's like, holy cannoli, Batman. This card is nuts to butts. Like, it is a six that if it has go again, it gives you go again next turn. What? Why would they put that on a card? <laughs> Why would you do this? Who? Who is let? What? I don't. Someone has taken over the factory. Yeah. Like, yeah. what is going on? This card's nuts. It is nuts. So KO loves this card. Reinar loves this card. Levia might love this card. Don't know yet, but maybe. <laughs> she does. Uh, I think Olympia is gangbusters for this card. Yeah. I think it's a great card for Kasai because Kasai wants poppers because she doesn't want auto loss to Dromai and she wants she wants agility tokens all the time. Yeah. So like you're just like ba 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 like I think in ooh, CC this card's nuts. This card sucks for Dory. It is not mid at best, Jason. You, <laughs> yeah. you and Cole are over. Caught up to you, that. you guys are like Cheech and Chong over there with your freaking <laughs> blazing hot takes. Pun intended. I think uh, you know what's interesting about this card is that I think this card needed to exist to really pump up the wager mechanic. I think this, if you're playing against a hero that wagers. And they're wagering vigor tokens, and they're a brutal warrior. You have to think about this card because you just can't keep letting them play runner runners. Like, like this card will just kill you. Like it's that good. You know what I mean? Like just six go again, and it's yeah. It's like you just like two card eight people. You know what? One and one a world championship. A deck that just two card aided people. Yeah. And its name was Icelander. <laughs> yeah. If you weren't checking the math there. The cards, the card is insane. I think this card is fantastic. I love the design because it it does really like um it moves brute away from scab skins. The cards like this and the agility mm -hmm. tokens really move brute uh, brutes away from rolling scabs every turn. I love it. Card slaps, yeah. banger tier. All day long. I think, Don't yeah. at me. I think this is, like I said, I am just repeating myself here, but I think this is, when I look at this card, I love that it, like, bolsters up wager in a not, it's not a wager card, but it does, it, it, it wager mechanic needed this, so that wagers matter. Um, so that's how I look at it. Also, it's, uh, the art is straight out of Legends of Runeterra. <laughs> It is. That is literally a Falyard chick. <laughs> like as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Wait a second, that looks exactly." What card like you mind again? Um, but no, I I really like this card. Um, yeah. on to the next one. This is Double Down. It is a red pitch cost two, um, Guardian Warrior action, and it blocks for three. This says when you just. Uh, you may destroy a gold you control rather than pay the cost. The next attack that wagers this turn gets plus three and overpower. If a hero would create one or more tokens from a wager this turn, instead they create that many plus one of each of those tokens. Uh, yeah. Love it. I think Olympia really likes this card. Olympia and loves I think this card. Betsy... Yeah. This is this a card. three of and Betsy like windmill slam. This card's gross, dude. I am also not convinced that like Kasai doesn't like this card, to be completely honest. Um, I feel like Kasai is gonna be wanting to wager a non-zero amount of gold. So um Yeah, she has to gain gold, right? So like imagine um like uh, if you opened a pack and then you saw a card that said plus three and you're like, oh, this is a nimbleism, right? And then you're like, oh, wait, this blocks for three. Oh, wait, it can cost zero. Oh, wait, it can give my attack bad dominate. 
And then you're like, that's really good. And then you're like, wait, there's more. It's wait, there's more. And it's like, oh, it just doubles everything that you create. So like if you go like double down, good time shampoo, because Betsy's out here just living her best life. And then you double down on a big bet. That's like 8,000 tokens. There might not be enough little snappy sticks to actually put that <laughs> amount of tokens on the board. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Also, uh, we're not going to have TCG Ted overpower tokens. We're going to have TCG Ted bad dominate tokens. <laughs> bad dominate. <laughs> bad dominate. Um, I guess we have to rank this somewhere. Uh, I think this is. I think this is in slaps tier. Oh, I think it's very yeah, strong. I mean, if we're putting Big Bat and Golden Sun in there, I think this is on that yeah. same level. Yeah, auto three of. Yeah, I think it's auto three of an Olympian uh, Betsy, and it's not close. And then like maybe Kasai um, wants to run it. I, I don't maybe Victor like in a re- no. Just kidding. Never mind. I'm lying. I'm drunk. No. Go next. Yeah. So. We've made it to the generics. Um, first up is Nasty Surprise. It is a blue pitch, zero cost um, attack. Yes, tax for two, blocks for three. And it says, when an opponent's effect puts this into a graveyard from anywhere, create an agility might and vigor token. Uh, I think this is adorable. Yeah, I don't want to be arsenaling this man. Like, eh. it's a great ninja card, and I'll leave it at that. That's awesome. real. Like, you are not putting this card in your deck to try the counterplay, like C and C or Codex. It's like putting a bad card in your deck to try to like make a matchup better. It's like, why don't you just put better cards in your deck, and maybe that would make your matchup <laughs> yeah. better. But this card does slot in very nicely into like Katsu and Fi. So like we just I think... talked about how Katsu doesn't want a vigor token though. True. <laughs> Big true. It's definitely not slay. I think it's just adorable. I think it's just a fun card. Uh, but like on turns where you get Codex of Frailty, like you ain't gonna be swinging Kadachis anyways. No. I think it's like it's a pretty reasonable card to play in Fi. It's adorable. It's adorable. It is adorable. That's that's exactly what the the adorable tier is the the card that like the jank master at your local armory is like this is broken. That's how you know it's adorable. Yes, yes, that one dude. Yeah. Um, so when Static is uh, the best card he's ever seen. <laughs> um, Got him. Yeah. Next up is uh, pay up. It's a red cost three. Uh, generic attack again it has six power and three defense if defending hero controls a gold this gets overpower when this hits a hero gain control of a gold token they control if you don't deal one damage to him oh boy this card is like teched up man this is like a tech card dromai did not want to see this card printed <laughs> It came hard in the paint for yeah. Dromai. When people are like, all right, so I got my CNCs. What other random popper could I put in my deck? Pay up is definitely one of those random yeah, yeah. poppers you want to put in your deck. This is um, the Toy Story meme where uh, he is dropping down and dirty and he has pay up in the other hand. Yep. This is slots right in. Yeah, it's very good. I, I think it's uh, okay. I see you. Like, it's not, like, crazy. I think it's, like, a super techie card. Um, but, yeah, I think it's really solid. Like I said, it's, like, down and dirty on steroids. It's probably just mid as hell, mm, to be honest. Yeah. Like, it, it's going to take a very meta specific definitely. meta yeah. for that card to see decks, and I think that just lands it right into mid as hell uh, territory. Because, like, if it if it is that meta, the card's good. But it's not like, oh my god, I need three copies. I won't be able to live my life or win an armory without this card. It's it's always just going to be like, oh, it's a good meta for this. I don't own any. Yeah, I guess I'll just play Yellow Raging Onslaught and I'll <laughs> live, move on with my life. 
So the Dromai Living Legend Doomers are like relieved to see this printed, huh? Next All card right. up here. Next card. Ripple Away. It is Ripple a generic away. attack. It's a blue pitch. It costs two. Tax for four. Blocks for three. Um, it a lot of things. It has some text on it as well. So instant, discard this. If an action card would create one or more tokens this turn, instead it creates that many minus one of each of those tokens. Uh, this is adorable. Yes, it is not slate here. No, it's just adorable. It's like, it's at least they they put a three block on it, right? So, like, if this had a if this was like a two block for some reason, it would just never, ever, ever even be thought about being played. Three block blue. It attacks for four, which isn't the worst thing in the world. And it, if your deck, listen. I've played a lot of Reinhardt. There's a lot of bad cards you had to put in your deck before this set just to make a functional deck. Yeah, yeah. If your deck already sucks, let's say your name is Arachne, this is not the worst blue you could put in your deck. There's a lot worse blues that you could put in your deck, and this ain't one of them. So it's at least yeah. adorable. I looked at it as like Pursuit finds its way into a lot of decks, right? Because it gives you that extra card, that extra intellect. But it blocks for two, so it was always kind of like, uh, yeah, okay, I guess. So it's like, if Pursuit blocked for three, I think it would find its way more into the slot. This just doesn't have good enough text, right? Pursuit's infinitely better text. I, I think that it. this is a card kind of like keep an eye on, though, because LSS has like really started to push like token creation, trying to like mm -hmm. move value. <clears throat> into future turns so that one fatigue isn't as big of an issue for the game mm -hmm. because if you can move a bunch of value into a following turn maybe take a little bit of a turn off but you can move that value into the next turn with this token creation then fatigue isn't an issue and the game is still fun and not just like go burr play your entire hand aggro um if we continue to see a lot of token creation this could be a very good tool for defensive decks to like negate some of these like trying to set up like big pop off turns um yeah it's interesting I at least that's why it's adorable so yeah and we've made it nate we've made it guess what guys we made it to the best card of the set i don't think i'm that far off on that statement either so um next card up is standing order it is a zero cost attack, attacks for four, blocks for three. And it says, when this attacks or defends, you may put a card from your arsenal on the bottom of your deck. And if you do, it gets plus two attack and plus two defense. I thought you had the pick one. Uh, Does it get both? No, it says and. It gets plus two attack and plus two defense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh shit, you're right. <laughs> I can't read. Um you're just slapping it in banger. Yeah, dude. It is a this is like slapping your knee, hooting holler, and yeehaw. Banger dead. I think it's a banger. I think if the card slaps, don't get me wrong. The modality of this card, I just don't <sighs> Bro. I Zero for fours are like handy to start with. Then it blocks for five. What deck wants a zero for four right now? Mm, I think it's just good. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it is a good card in aggro decks that want to, it's like better flex. It's better wounded blow. Um, this is like, a grade A Briar card. It becomes a popper, which is like pretty, pretty awesome. But Briar doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, why'd you say Briar? It's I think... a Briar card. This is the most Briar card I've ever seen in my entire career. Yeah, it would be pretty cool in Briar. But uh no, I think this card's really, really good. I think it's a banger. I can see you can you could talk me into slaps. I think it slaps. 
I think this is like a yeah. This is a now when I think about the price that it's gonna be at, I kind of have to move it out of banger because I don't think it's like a thirty dollar majestic. Fortunately, yeah. it might be only because it's generic, but like, I think it's like a fifteen to twenty dollar majestic. This is one majestic that I think might sell for higher the first week and a half of release and then drop down because people think it is that like they think it is the command and conquer of flesh and blood but really it's like the e-strike of flesh and blood mm. right e-strike doesn't make every deck but it always gets looks oh. it, that is what this card is yeah yeah all right like Fine. this card isn't codex level it is not like look at card put like as soon as you start building a deck yeah. you put that card in it is i've been <sighs> convinced i agree it, it slaps yeah i think this card it's, is so good though definitely it's a really good card it really comes down to like this is one of the cards that you tech into once you see the meta yeah. it is not the card that you start your deck building journey with though yeah warmonger's not either so like why is warmonger's 40 bucks i don't know i i think i don't know it'll be interesting to see in, this set, in there's way too many good cards in this set yeah it's true there's a lot of good cards in this set they can't all be 50 bucks <laughs> i mean they can yeah, be they listen can. i'm opening 160 <laughs> boxes they're all 50 dollars, guys <laughs> send me the bills now uh jason it is not a 10 dollar card it will be more than that Oh yes, it will definitely be more than that. I like. I would expect this card to be this. This card might start higher and fall lower, but like, if you don't have this yeah. card, you're not like. It's not like your deck is not competitively viable anymore. I doubt. If there was a tournament today, I don't think that this would make many decks. Yeah, I don't see Dromai showing up all that much, and I think that's where I would start. I would... will always show up because Dromai players are two things. One, delusional. Two, always going to show up with Dromai. <laughs> it is the it is the basically their entire existence. I love you all, Dromai players, but <laughs> Is don't draw my is just not a good deck, it never converts. You can't even convince me otherwise. You guys have been going on two years and you barely want to call all right, me. All right, all right, you're already <laughs> dead, mate. You're beating a dead horse, here. you're killing him. Um, I, I think, yeah, all right, fine, slaps. I agree. Um, next one up, Nate Tenacity. It is a yellow pitch, cost zero. It is another attack. Um, attacks for two, blocks for three, which is super interesting. All these cards blocking for three. Yeah. Um, and it says when this attacks, it gains plus X, where X is the number of defending cards on this combat chain. Uh, yeah. So one of, one of my locals in my Discord said it's unsalt the wounds, <laughs> which I think is like, yeah, it pretty much is unsalt the wounds. It is the, it, this is like, such a sneaky ninja card in the set. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this is like good in Katsu, and I think it's fantastic in Fi. Just the dichotomy of like, all right, this is my art of war turn. Mm -hmm. I will pop mask of momentum this turn, and it you can't just block everything and oh, I'll just go get a lava burst. It's like I'm getting salt the wound or tenacity. You tell me now what I'm getting because either all this stuff is hitting or none of it's hitting. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah, it's kind of like a little anti fatigue for them, right? You know, you yeah. can't. Yeah. Not that it's kind of hard to block them out if, if you know, you have to be a pro, but I think this gives them a little bit extra room into yeah. it. I think this is okay. I see you good. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I see you. It's only going to hit a couple decks, um, mm -hmm. but it does have like some like kind of interesting, if Prism, like, uh, Luminaris still existed. This would be a very interesting Prism card, um, oh, because yeah. it's yellow. Because it's yellow. Um, it being a yellow strip is quite interesting. Um, 
Yeah, it's bizarro. It's bizarro salt the wounds, right? It's yeah. <laughs> it's literally it's like, the opposite. It's like a weird Bolton card, um, because like especially in the end game, mm. it's always getting the buff, so you can always give it go again. Yeah, for sure. Um, next one up, last of the generics before we head into the expansion slot. This one, uh, do secrets, yellow strip. Um, cost zero it is a generic instant it says look at the target hero's hand and the top card of their deck uh that's it if you if this was played from the optional draw card uh this is i feel like slay level i don't know i don't see the this like hand knowledge and deck knowledge is kind of interesting but like bro it's an instant it's like such a real I, I hate no blocks. Especially no blocks that do very little. It I want to say this is adorable. Be only because it has like there you know the jank master is already brewing up their seduce secrets deck with their sensors and I know every card in your hand already. I'm going to, I know what to call a sensor. Um, I'm not saying nobody's going to play this. People will play this. People think, will play this in UPF. Yeah. It will get played. Unlike Slay. Slay will never get played. Yeah, Slay will not get played. I think if it, they, they saved the LSS saved this card by putting that second line of text saying that if you play it from Arsenal, you get the draw a card. Because yes. like without Draw that, this is slay level. Terrible. Like instantly. that would actually be slay. instantly. So I the think they save their asses is... with this card by being like, "Well, I guess you get the draw card." All right, I'm gonna. Uh, Dell had a good question. He said, "If all the slaps and bangers are ten plus dollars, then we have we're talking solid EV, right?" Um. So I think two of this. Uh, I think Big Bet and Golden Sun won't be ten dollar cards. Yeah, but I think they slap. Yeah. Um. That's true. I like because they're specializations, they'll probably fall into like the five ish dollar range, probably lower. Uh, Your widespread cards, I think, are good. Uh, I, widespreads aren't locked. If they're locked, it, <clears throat> uh, so the way I, I look at it is they are kind of locked, though, right? That's how they're evaluated right now. They're not. They're not, but they are. Chain and Blitz was playing the uh, widespread ruin. Um, yeah, but I don't think that's like pushing the value all that much. It does. It so, like if you're looking at like a card pool, like the first thing that you look at is like, okay, is this a specialization? All right, so the Victor specialization. The only people who are going to play that are people who want to own that, who are going to own and keep that card, are going to be people who want to play Victor. So there's the Victor mains. There's the like guardian players who are like Victor curious and that's it. Um, I don't think Victor those are the only people who are going to own that card. So like, let's say that's 500 people. If we have, let's say like primed to fight now primed to fight, you've got your Victor, Victor mains, you got your big Betsy's and then you have your Bravo people who are like, all right, whatever. I get it. I haven't had to buy a card in two years because Bravo's <laughs> been unplayable and we haven't really got any support. Actually, that's not true. Starstruck is a busted card. But they basically had to buy one card in the last year, right? Yeah. Um, like, all right, we can splurge on the, the primed to fight. So then you have uh, the pool of people who are now, you have Victor, Betsy, and Bravo mains. And then you have Guardian ask and competitive players and then the Guardian Curious players. So that might be like, let's say all of those mains combined, that's 1,500. You got your competitive players, maybe there's another 500. And then you have Guardian Curious players who might be like another 1,000. And you just opened up your, like, people who might want this card from 500 to like 3,000. Because you just like open up the people who, the a really wide range of people who actually might want this card. Specializations just narrow it down so much. Yeah, um, I mean, I think we could like, yeah, I mean, I think we're, we put it in slaps because like the text on the card actually slaps. 
the cards but, themselves are incredibly good. But it's really okay. I see you. So we can pull those down. Yeah. They're like, you know, Static had one good comment. Uh, it's like Oak and Old, three to four bucks, right? Like even when Old Him was, you know, at the tall, the reign of his power. I could yeah. see him being like that for sure. And then his second comment, all I got to say to that is uh, phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on but, <laughs> Like even Oak and Old, that was an old that was playable in old old him and Starvo. And yes, that was three to four bucks. For a minute. For a minute, yeah, yeah. Um okay. So we have officially made it to the expansion slot an hour and a half in, but I think we're having a lot of fun here. Hopefully you guys are as well.